Okay, so this is a section two on the uh, amorphous and amorphous polymers and understanding glass engine temperature. So I'm here, uh, here I blow up the figure in the textbook and uh, I will guide you through this important figure. So this figure x-axis is a temperature and this is a specific volume. So this is such as a volume per mass. And then how this one experiment was done is in the melt state, they have a very reproducible uh, volume. Okay? And then this, this figure is trying to actually teach you the different kinds of uh, temperatures. So the, let me focus on something uh, glass transient temperature. So here, if it is an amorphous polymer, and they will follow this, and if you do it uh, fast cooling, they ended up going this way. Okay, and if you do slow cooling, they ended up following a little bit more compact packing of the polymer chain. So this is a slow. So that's why it's a fast, and that's why it's a slow here. So uh, so Tg glass transient temperature is actually happening at a range. Uh, when there, uh, when there is a, um, you can do the extrapolation of the. This is a glassy state, and then this is a rubbery state, and this is all called a melt. And then, uh, depending on the cooling speed, you can have a different uh, Tg here, okay. and and the, the slower you can have you have a more compact compact structures uh, more compact uh, packing of chains so the density is going up and then the, there's a one so the uh, glassy state is a very uh, polymer chains are really uh, move very very slow slowly and the chains are very uh, slow uh, in terms of the kinetics. But what important f uh, message that you can take it from here, if I, if I take these uh, pictures and uh, turn, uh, turn that into the TG scenarios, so I, you, got, you can think about this way. So this is a, a specific volume. This is a temperature. So this is a volume. This is a temperature. And you can think about there is a slower expansion rate of the in the glassy state, and then things are flexible. They can actually, essentially, uh, they can expand it faster. So this is a glassy, and this is a, uh, a rubbery. So this will be a glassy. This is a rubbery. So this is a good picture that you should keep your mind when something about the glass transition temperature, that's the one that will be, will be showing up here. And then I'm going to use a, a reddish color to, to tell you about the melting transition. So melting transition is, is the same drill. You cool it down. At some point, that actually you have a discontinuous drop when they form the um, melt-like uh, polymers and forming the crystals. And then they start to, they can kind of cooling it down. So, so what, I, what I can draw here is in the above, in the rubbery state, they also essentially have a rubbery state. In that case, uh, you will have a, uh, chains, let's say it just looks like that, okay? So you have a, pretty much like a chain, just like a, uh, bundles of spaghetti noodles. But when they undergo the TM here, and then what they, what, what's going to happen is the fraction of the chain start to pack, and some fraction will not be able to pack, and they start to pack like this. And they will form some, here I'm just giving you domains about chains uh, packed each other, forming a little, little uh, plates and some of the chains are uh, forming a loops like this and this so this region which is what we call the crystalline domain 
we are able to see some much more compact packing of the polymer chain than the one that is more like amorphous, right? So therefore, the discontinuous volume change. So that at temperature is Tm. So that's a really the key difference is, and then they, they have a very distinct uh, uh, drop in the volume. So what do you see now? So if it is a Tm, then you will see the, actually, this is more like uh, rubbery. And then this will be a big. So it's, this is a rubbery. And this is a crystal plus actually a rubbery. That will be a TM. So here is a, a volume change is discontinuous. So we will discuss this uh, in very details for the case of TG. For the case of TM, um, the continuity and discontinuity of the volume change will be uh, explained in terms of the first order and second order th thermodynamic transition. This one is a first order. This is a second order uh, thermodynamic transition on this. Uh, the better picture of this, uh, I'm going to use the same kind of a uh, color notation for this is a, a, a picture that is shown in the picture that is shown in the textbook. This is essentially what we observe experimentally that is shown up on the upper right hand corner. The specific volume of temperature and this is a glassy, this is a rubbery, and then what people has developed is okay so let me think about there's a something called uh, intrinsic uh, volume, what they call excluded volume. Polymer chain should have its own excluded volume size. So this is a sort of the reference point where the bundles of essentially spaghetti, right, uh, itself has its own volume called the v, v naught. So the V naught represents some um, the excluded volume of the polymer chain. And once you have a polymer chain, uh, and and then anything above, this is uh, essentially measured volume above, and this is an excluded volume. And the, the one above is, uh, in a way, the real uh, macroscopic Okay. So the the difference between these two is uh, what we call this this shaded area, and this is what we call the free volume. Okay. So the free volume uh, is a fraction of the volume that shows the how much of the polymer chains are full, full, uh, freely move around, and and in the a glassy is we also say as a frozen state. And so that's that's um, the vitrified and the frozen state and their motions of polymer chains are essentially freezed. Okay? Frozen state. As a glassy state of the polymers. And as a better picture, uh, to summarize it, I'd like to show you this way. I think I mentioned to you that there is, there is a semi-crystalline polymer, Tm is higher than Tg. Sometimes it's a little bit confusing, the, the picture that's shown up in the 16-2. So better picture is the, I will prefer to do it this way. This is a semi-crystalline polymers, and then what's going to see is you are going to see very slow rise in the temperature, and then you're going to rise rubbery, and then there is a discontinuous jump, and then still faster rise. Right. So now you can see that. Right. Uh, so this is a two different slope. 
So this is a uh, what we call glass stringent temperature, and this is uh, what you can see. There is a discontinuous jump in the volume. That's a TM. Okay. So this is a glassy state uh, with crystals in it, and this is a rubbery state with crystals in it. And this is actually just a rubbery, right? So this is a for semi-crystalline polymer. And a good example is a polypropylene. Okay, polypropylene is CH2, C, CH3. As you might recall, if you if you go to back to the, the first section, the, the polypropylene has a minus twenty-three degree C. So it has a TG of minus twenty-three degree C and the melting temperature is about 130 degrees C. Okay. And then uh, this is a, just a physical concept about how the volume change. Okay, one I'll emphasize one more. It's, it's slowly expanding it. A little bit faster to expand, and there's a discontinuous jump, and then they continue to rise. And that's a, a concept of the volume versus temperature. And later, we are going to uh, relate that, this to the uh, DSC experiment for capturing TG and the TM at the same time. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the later section. But this concept about volume versus temperature is very important, whether things are discontinuous, uh, continuous or discontinuous at uh, continuous at TG and discontinuous at TM.